Happy April 6th, everyone, and happy birthday, Darlene. It's time for another day in the life video, and I know you've all been waiting for it. Lots has changed since the last video. Lots of things in our country and in our world. We do have a fabulous new way to set up fosters, which is great. We've gotten really creative about it. The nice thing is I'm seeing that businesses and families are getting so creative about different ways that they're handling the shelter in place and to make sure that we're not meeting in groups with more than 10 people. There have been a lot of people getting sick. My own husband has been tested positive for COVID-19 and just keep him in your prayers when you can. He, poor guy, he's gonna get an inhaler, I think sometime in the next 24 hours, but I don't know. See, I'm not with him, he is in Guam. So I'm here in California and he's on the other side of the world in Guam. So I don't have a lot of control. I can't look into him and, and take care of him but he has some medical that's checking on him twice a day. And uh, I'm stuck here. And so again, when we are given lemons, we still have to do the best we can. And that means that we have to find joy. We have to find the joy in life. Fortunately for me, I've got about 30 bundles of joy at this ranch. Some of them are my children. The rest are all four legged. Okay, and we also have some baby spring chicks and they have two legs, so they also count. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. Okay, well, it's not shining. It's actually sprinkling, but it is still a beautiful day. And what's in your hand? Some chicken food. Not eggs. actually pub mix. It is chicken food for the chicks. Ooh, the heater's on. The little chickens are feeling very cozy. Whoa! That was cool. Our little spring chickens. Good morning. We have to put every single animal away at night around here because the coyotes like to go shopping for groceries when we don't. This is Daisy and she is not to be confused with our Labrador Daisy, whom I also love. Daisy the Labrador is a service dog that was already placed, but this is Golden Retriever Daisy. And she's in our self-training program which is a bit of a hybrid. It just means that we start training the dog uh, since the time they're born. And then we work with them based on their traits and their personality, train them different tasks based off of that. And then when they're old enough and we know where they should go, we place them in a home, um, either as a trained pet or as a service dog in training. And then we continue working with their recipient. Oh, you're adorable. It's sprinkling on and off today, so she's a little dirty. She's been cleaner. Sit. Touch. 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 Stay.
This is Holly. She is super sweet. Little golden retriever. Are you learning stuff today? Yeah, she's learning alert. So I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like. In the beginning stages, it looks like a dog's jumping up on you, but we just shape it until they are only putting a gentle paw. Come on, Holly. The incredible thing about dogs is they know when you're sad or you're upset and they help you find the joy. This is Eve. She's going to be helping me today with an experiment we're doing with Dr. Phil. It's a different Dr. Phil than the one you're thinking about. He has been working with a laboratory and they sent us some chemical scents. And these scents are going to let us see if dogs can smell the sense of anxiety or flashbacks or stress nightmares and if it's the same sense as what they're detecting with pots or seizures we already know that dogs can detect the sense of seizures and pots there have been studies to confirm that but we're taking it a step further to see what is it that dogs are picking up on when they're alerting to psychiatric conditions we know they do it but how are they doing it is the big question. We're gonna find out. Essentially, he sent us all these bottles and we are putting the bottles inside of a can that dogs cannot get into. And then we put one of those cans inside of a bucket and eventually we'll have an entire line above buckets. But we start with just the two. And with the two buckets, we use a clicker and some treats and we're training the dog to go and find the bucket that has the scent in it. These scents are chemically created in a laboratory. So in this way, whenever Eve goes over to the right bucket, I am going to be clicking. So I'm making a noise to mark the exact moment that she's giving me the right behavior. And then I'm gonna be giving her a treat. And I do that over and over again. Sometimes I'm even moving the buckets back and forth. But what you'll start to see here is that a lot of it is a waiting game, but she does start to determine which bucket is important. And then she starts to realize that it's the scent she's supposed to be following. Later, we use this knowledge for the dog and train them to alert to the odors of seizures. And we do that on a very regular basis, but we always start off with our buckets. Later, we're gonna put the scent in a lineup with other scents, and the scents may be with that same person after they have taken gauze and swabbed the inside of their mouth, after they've had a seizure, and then we're also gonna ask them to send us some odor samples of maybe after they've eaten, after they've rested, after they've exercised, but they're sure that they didn't have a seizure with those other scent samples. And we're gonna line up all those different samples 
with all of our different buckets, we might have five or six different buckets, and the dog is able to go to that lineup and pick out the seizure odor. Then we're gonna take that seizure odor and we're gonna put it inside of a little container that we bring around with us. Okay. We can just hold it in our treat bag. And then we're gonna open up that scent container without the dog hearing it or seeing it. We do it real stealth like a ninja. And then we start to see that the dog starts alerting by pawing at our leg. So they do understand the scent means that they're supposed to paw at us and we're going to give them a treat. But in the beginning, it's all about lining them up in these buckets. So it starts off pretty simple and it gets more complex with time. Off to the barn to get my next students, but it is raining again. Hey Austin, you wanna come out? Wait. Wait, good boy. Are you a pretty boy? Yes. You wanna work? You enjoying this rainy weather? Good boy, you're a good boy, sit. Yes, good boy. Stay. Good boy. Austin, hold. What a good boy, sit. So we've had some amazing fosters. We've worked out a program where they can pick the dog up out of a crate and they return it to us in a crate. The dog, of course, gets a thorough wash down and a great grooming to make sure that we're not contaminating each other. But um, it's been working out really well. We have a lot of videos. We're supporting people long distance. There's a great way to make this work. And it is really blessing the organization and all the people waiting to get the dogs. These are the only dogs that are in the kennel right now, which is really very impressive. We usually have many more dogs than that. Usually every single kennel is full. So earlier I was explaining that my husband was diagnosed with COVID and he's on the other side of the world and he is really, really sick. He has all of those horrible symptoms that people are experiencing and a lot of us are losing loved ones because of this sickness. And sometimes life is just hard. It's hard and it doesn't mean that we're not grieving with the people that we love and that we're not suffering through the different afflictions that we're faced with, but we still have the choice. And I see that every day with our recipients. Our recipients aren't approved to get a service dog because we say, hey, your life is really easy. We see that they are going through something very difficult they might have witnessed the death of someone in battle. They might have been traumatized. They may have been attacked. They may have been diagnosed with a horrible disease. They may go into the doctor and they say, you know, based on our findings, you're gonna be lucky if you can walk in two years. Um, mothers and fathers that come in and their children have been diagnosed with epilepsy and monitors aren't working to monitor those seizures at night. I mean, this is horrible, horrible life-changing stuff that's going on. But our recipients are living, breathing testaments of what it's like to move forward and to find that joy. They're going forward to get a service dog that is going to help them. And how, how amazing is that? I mean, it's not easy to get a service dog. There is a lot of wait time that goes into it, or there's a lot of training, or there's a lot of fundraising. None of it's easy, but we persevere. So hang in there, everyone. I know this is hard, but we're gonna get through it. We'll see you soon.